What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with the Tesla Spy and video the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm gonna break down what's going on with the economic calendar thus far and how things are looking. And also some very important updates involving the economic calendar. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon. Anyways, looking at SPY, we can see that this thing is getting tighter as time progresses, and we're going to be watching some key levels. Now, SPY did sell off quite a bit today after we got some, you know, uh, some words from Jerome Powell yesterday, not to mention some more economic data. Uh, and that did lead to this little sell-off, but it wasn't really that significant to really shake the markets in a way because we still saw the buyers come back and defend their positions and SPY still closed at a decent level. So we haven't really closed below some critical supports. We're still holding up nicely. We're going to be watching some key levels, which I'll be talking about a little bit later on. I also want to note that it's still possible for SPY to get one more break to the upside, especially as we approach 500. It's still a real possibility. And we'll be watching that very, very carefully. But for now, I just want to talk about something else. I'll be talking about some earnings and such before I break down the charts. Now, for earnings, do not forget that today we just had Palantir announce their earnings. I'll be talking about that, about that in a minute. And then for tomorrow, we have Spotify in the morning, Hertz in the morning, all before the market opens. And after the market closes, we have Snap and Ford all coming out for tomorrow. For Wednesday, we have Alibaba in the morning, Uber and a couple of others, not to mention PayPal and Disney after the market closes. Also, we have PepsiCo on Friday. So I'll be watching for all of those. But let me just note that for earnings, Palantir just made a very, very big announcement. And that is looking at their earnings, things are looking pretty good for them so far. The share price is up 19% on revenue beat. That's very, very good news for them. Uh, they also had some very, very nice guidance. So their guidance actually came in aligned with what Wall Street was estimating for the full year. They also mentioned that their EPS was as expected, not to mention the revenue was a nice beat. So that's good news for them. The revenue is up 20%. They're showing some consistent growth and guidance was quite strong. That's good news for them. And the share price is on a rip. Now, on top of this, I just want to mention that there is more data coming out for tomorrow you want to be paying attention to. So today, just for a quick reminder, when the ISM services data came out, ISM services prices were above expectations. Not the best of news, especially for those who are interested in inflationary data. Uh, but once again, it's not everything. It's not the biggest piece of data. When this came out, this is what caused the market to sell off. But it still got quickly bought back up, so it's not the end of the world. Now, for tomorrow, we have more data coming out. First and foremost, I just want to call out that at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we basically have the Economic Optimism Index report coming out. This is going to be very important for the psychological aspect of the economy and how future sentiment is looking. So watch this at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 30 minutes after the market opens. Then at 11 o'clock a.m. tomorrow, we have the total household debt coming out for Q4. It's going to be kind of minor and maybe not causing that much craziness for the markets. And after that, starting at noon, we have a bunch of Fed speakers. We have Mester, Kashkari, and Collins from the Fed all giving their speeches. So make sure you're prepared for that just to be safe. With that being said, guys, I just want to say that a lot of the data is coming out in the daytime. A lot of it's coming out in the morning. Nothing is going to be that crazy, that insane, uh, except for the economic optimism report. It might cause some volatility. But besides that, everything is very minor, and the market is just going to be kind of like listening to what these Fed speakers have to say. They could cause some moves here and there, maybe nothing too crazy, hopefully. And then make sure you just watch for that. Besides that, the market is very close to extreme greed, as we're seeing buyers still defending their positions. And on top of this, the market's holding up nicely. Market momentum is at this extreme level, extreme greed. Other indicators are still at extremes. The puts and call positioning is still dropping, still once again, at these extremes, we're seeing a lot of these puts being closed, not to mention market volatility is still very, very neutral. So we're still seeing the VIX trying to hold above the 50 daily moving average, uh, but it's starting to sink. It's on a slight downtrend. So we'll be watching that. It's kind of indecisive for now. And we're still waiting for a big catalyst to affect this. Now let's talk about the charts. How are things looking? Honestly, guys, I think SPY is going to get very tight right here. It's been getting tighter and tighter, still respecting this range. So it's very probable that's going into tomorrow, depending on the data and such, uh, we might see SPY kind of pop like this and come back down to test this with a little drop, come back up and just get tighter and tighter. Then we might be looking for a move in either to the upside or the downside temporarily. 
Uh, I think there's a good chance it's going to be towards like the upside. We, we might just like break out and get a back test and start pushing a little bit towards the end of the day tomorrow, maybe even later on as we approach the middle of the week. I think there's a good chance that SPY could still approach 497 and eventually 500 by Friday. I'm not 100% sure about Friday, but it is still very possible we push all the way up here. It's still a possibility, but we have to give this thing some time to really make those moves. So please be very patient with the markets. There's a good chance SPY will get that breakout, but also be very careful considering where we're at. Now, SPY also has some critical levels. The 4-hour 20 EMA is at 491 is going to be our key support. If we lose that, you're going to be watching 488. We're kind of contracting on the MACD right now, and we're going to be watching to see how well we could hold above 491. If we close below that, that's going to be a bearish signal. So we want to be closing above 491. As long as we do that, we're still favoring the bulls technically. But make sure you uh, watch for that and, and remember that going into tomorrow, if we close below 491, it's going to be a bad sign. If we close above it, we're, we're going to be in the clear. So for now, we're going to be looking for some consolidation tomorrow, maybe like a little pop and drop when we open sideways price action and possibly a break to the upside. If we break out of this, we'll be watching that. Make sure you're very careful, at least for the time being. What about Tesla? How is Tesla looking, in my opinion? And honestly, guys, it's not looking that great. So Tesla is getting hit with lots of bad news. We rejected very close to where our 20 EMA happens to be. And the bad news keeps on hurting the share price. There's news about Elon Musk using substances. There's more news about the price cuts that came out. Just so much negative news. Also, a sales drop in California. If you look at Tesla, it's very simple, basically. We have these levels right over here, these important zones and supports. And we also happen to have this yellow trend line acting as resistance. See, we touched this, rejected, touched it, rejected, touched it, rejected over and over again. We did manage to close above 180, which is a decent sign. But for the last couple of days, since we opened for like three, four days in a row, Tesla's been selling off as soon as we opened. So it's going to depend on the news. That's going to be a big factor affecting it. As of right now, it's, what's been happening to Tesla consistently is Tesla sells off and we open. Then we get bought back up in the afternoon and we end up closing like kind of decently. So I think there's a very good chance it's going to pan out tomorrow again. But this also depends on the news. So it's a little tricky to predict. If we start popping, watch 182.5 as resistance. Then above that, we have 184 and also this yellow trend line. If we break that, 188 is going to be our next target. If we break down, watch 180 then eventually watch 178. If we lose that, 175 is going to be our target in 172.25. I believe the most likely possibility is Tesla might start to sell off just a little bit when we open. We're going to be looking to see if we can hold 180. We're barely holding it, so we might see it actually come down just a bit. And it might just consolidate a little bit below this around 178. I'm thinking it's going to drop and then pop and just trade sideways in this range and maybe try to get one more push to end the day above 180. So you might get a very flat stay, a little drop and then a pop and sideways price action again for Tesla. Tesla's still not looking that great though, so be very careful as we're barely holding above 180 and we'll see how the market affects it. But make sure you watch these levels just to be safe. On to the QQQ. I just want to mention that the QQQ is very flat. We're still consolidating technically, like at least at this range. We're going to be looking for another liquidity grab down here at this imbalance towards 472, then a bounce. And then we're going to be looking for a test around 429 to 430. So I think it might drop and then pop again. It's still technically respecting an uptrend. You can even draw out like a, a trend line like this. Uh, which is very, very useful. And we're going to be looking to see if we can get another test like this. So we're technically have this up with pop, come back down to retest this in the 427s and just start pushing back up. You might see something very similar on the QQQ. And there's a good chance it's actually going to continue to outperform SPY just a bit because of the fact that NVIDIA is looking pretty good. And we also have an inverse head and shoulder. So I just realized this, we have like a left shoulder, head and right shoulder. So we could come down and just start to form this right shoulder and start pushing up higher. It might see a nice bounce tomorrow. Why might it do that? Because of two other stocks. Number one, NVIDIA is approaching 700 as you predicted. If it breaks that, watch 707, eventually 712 and 720 above that. Uh, I'm not going to count on 720 immediately. We're going to be watching 700 first, but I think it's going to reach 700 by tomorrow. It looks very bullish. I think there's a good chance it might even gap up and just keep going. So it's looking very strong. So we're going to be watching that very, very carefully. NVIDIA could help the QQQ outperform again. And as far as Apple goes, we have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure. I called this out yesterday. Right, right, we have this left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder that's forming up here. 
going to be looking for an uptrend, but first we have to fight above one of our 200 EMAs. I remember looking at this. Let me just double check it to remember. I think it's the four hour 200 EMA. Yeah, so it's the four hour 200 EMA at 188.5. If we break 188.5, Apple's going to be pushing up towards 190. If you fail to break that again tomorrow, we could reject temporarily and then, you know, retest 187, grab liquidity before we try to push up higher. But the trend is bullish. We made a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. It's bullish. It's going to try to push towards 190, in my opinion. So with Apple looking bullish, this is a good sign for SPY. But make sure you watch your levels just to be safe. We have support. Uh, we're, we're fighting 188 as resistance, 188.5, and then eventually 190. And for support, you're going to be watching 186.5 and then the 185s, followed by 184.25. But the trend is still looking pretty good. So with that being said, that's it for the main five. Now let's just talk about a couple of others just real quick. Rivian is coming down, unfortunately, got this rejection. It was trying to curl, but ended up failing because of some bad news that came out. So we're going to be looking for a little bounce tomorrow. It might actually retest 15.15, eventually 15.4, and it might reject off the 20 EMA again. So a little pop and drop is still a possibility. It might bounce in the morning and start coming back down. So be a little careful with this. SoFi, this thing has come down. We were talking about this thing potentially coming down and eventually bouncing. It didn't bounce as much as we thought. Uh, it actually was still relatively weak. I'm going to be looking for a test of the 5 EMA at 7.66, and we'll see if it breaks that or not. If it fails, it's not going to be good. So watch that very carefully. For the Russell 2000, I would say that this is now looking weak because, as we mentioned earlier, we were stuck between the 50 and the 200 EMA, back and forth and back and forth price action. And then today we broke below the 200. So it's looking like it might make its way back down towards 190, looking relatively weak for a temporary sell-off. Microsoft, this thing was holding up very nicely. We were looking for a little retracement. We called this out yesterday towards 407, then maybe a bounce. Uh, it, it's holding support. It depends on if it could hold the 50 EMA. If it loses 403.6, it's going to drop down to fill this gap at 400. If it holds that, it could bounce and start pushing back up to 410 plus. So it depends on if it holds above the 50 EMA. So I'll be watching that very, very carefully on the four hour time frame. Um, for AMD, you know, it's very flat right now, but it's now it's starting to look a little bit weak. We got a push up. We were expecting this thing to push up a little higher and we reached 180 during the pre-market. So it pushed in the pre-market then it came back down kind of like the opposite of what we were thinking. I was thinking it would, it would push a little bit later, but it happened during the pre-market. Now it's looking a little bit weak. So we're going to be watching a retest of 171. If we lose 171, a bigger drop is going to be coming. So watch 171 is key support. We'll see if it holds. It might test that guy. So be a little bit careful. Uh, this is not looking as strong as before. So just be very mindful of that. For the VIX, it's looking a little bearish, but it's still quite indecisive. It's been stuck within this range, but I could see it retracing towards 13.5. Maybe the market pumps a little bit later on tomorrow. NASDAQ still holding up, looking a little bit more bullish. QQQ still has life as well. And also, I just want to mention the dollar. Let me just hold up the dollar. Dollar is still indecisive. Sorry, where's the dollar? It's right here. Dollar is still indecisive. It tries like right here. Uh, it is trying to push a little bit, but you want to be a little bit careful right here because uh, we're going to be watching this support around the 104.3 area. If we lose this, a bigger drop is going to be coming. If you hold this, we could try to bounce. So be a little bit, be a little bit careful with the dollar trying to break out. I would still be careful with this. Uh, it's a little indecisive for the past like two to uh, two days. It's been a little indecisive up here. So just be careful and we'll see how it does from there. Coinbase is a little bit weaker than expected. We had some bad news as well for this. Rejecting off the 50 EMA. This thing has been selling off and actually lost this level. Now, I was thinking we had a nice inverse initial like structure, but this ended up failing. So sometimes it happens, guys. It is what it is. We just have to brush it off. So with that being said, uh, I basically anticipate it's going to be approaching 110 very soon. Then we have 105 below that. So it's looking a little bearish. Uh, the bad news has come out and it kind of caused that structure to fail. So it is what it is. Google is still looking quite good, but we have to try to break above 146.4. If we break that, then we're going to push for 150. If we fail to break 146.4, we're going to be stuck right here. So watch the 50 EMA on the four hour time from its resistance. We'll see how that holds. For Amazon, Amazon is kind of stuck right now. Uh, it might retrace a little bit more if we lose 169, watch 166, and we could bounce off that, but it might retrace just a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. And then Meta, not looking the strongest. It's down a little bit as we expected some downside for Meta and Amazon. We could be approaching 
the support at 441. So be a little bit careful with that. It's looking a little bearish. So it might sell off a little bit more. So that being said, guys, I think the market might see some consolidation tomorrow. We could run back up to new highs later on during the week, but this will depend on some data. So look for some consolidation, a little drop and a bounce later on. Sideways price action for most stocks out there. And we'll just get ready for some kind of maybe even some boring days, but just be patient. Do what you have to do, guys. And I'll see you guys very soon in the morning to report how things look. Take care. Don't forget about the data coming up for tomorrow and do what you have to do, guys. The market to the moon because the long term is still very bright despite what the short term is showing us. And peace out.